us. It's brilliant to be able to start the day just reminding ourselves of God's love for us and just how much he cares for us and how much he wants us just to know that throughout the day. So we're gonna read that in Isaiah 43, verse four. It says, since you are pressured, precious and honored in my sight and because I love you. I wanna tell you this morning about the story of a teacher it's a story about a girl in America who had been given a class and it was basically a school that was really underperforming. It kind of been written off by a lot of people and she was given this class and basically told us not, you know, we're not gonna, you know, get much out of them. And there was a group of first graders and she started trying to help them and think about how do I give these kids, you know, something to think about for the future? How do I help them just understand how important their education is? And she was a psychologist as a background and she realized that, you know, this me talking to these kids about you know, what do you want to do when you grow up, it's just too far away, it's too abstract for them. What do these kids really want to become? And she realised when she listened to them, the thing that really excited these kids was, I want to be like those older kids, I want to be like the third graders, I want to be like the fourth graders, I want to be able to run faster, I want to be able to do this. And she, she sort of got into their mindset and thought, you know what, I'm going to tell these kids, I'm going to turn you into those third graders and those fourth graders. And she started to really motivate them around what motivated them. And she also changed the way that they saw themselves by changing their names. And I thought this was incredible because she said to the class, you know what, we're no longer going to call ourselves by our first names. Everyone's going to have a title and everyone's title is going to be Scholar. So they all called themselves Scholar Smith or Scholar Brown or Scholar whatever their surname was. And that's how they, they you know, interacted with each other. And every day they would remind themselves of what a scholar was and they would all say, a scholar is somebody who is capable of learning new and exciting things and achieving great success in life. And this is what they said day after day after day. They called themselves this name and they reminded themselves of what this was. And she just kept telling them, I'm gonna turn you into these third graders. I'm gonna turn you into a fourth grader. You're gonna be incredible. And you know what? This school was transformed through the work of this teacher. This class began to achieve results that they had never achieved in the past. And everyone was just amazed at what she'd done. And I thought, isn't this incredible? Because she gave them a new identity, because she says, this is who you are, and this is what you're gonna become. These kids started to live up to it. They started to believe in themselves because they saw that she had faith in them. They saw that she had confidence in them. They saw that she hadn't given up on them. She hadn't written them off. And she started to speak words of life over them. She started to call them by a new name and they started to live up to that identity. Isn't that incredible? But it, that is exactly what Jesus does with us. He has given us a brand new identity. I love the verse where it says that we've become a new creation, the old has gone. We are brand new. And I think when I first sort of learned that verse and became a Christian, I thought, oh, that was just a one-off thing. I've become a new creation when I became a Christian. And then every time I messed up, I thought, oh gosh, I'm not much of a new creation anymore. Or, oh dear, <laughs> I've kind of messed it all up. But I love the fact that we were reading Philippians 1, 6, it says that he who began a good work in us will bring it to completion. Do you know, the Lord is so much more involved in transforming our lives than we could ever be. He is so much more committed to that plan. That's on his to-do list, not on ours. He's the one that's gonna get us there. All we have to do is keep fixing our eyes on him and trusting in him. He is the one who is transforming us from the inside out. He's the one who's bringing us from glory to glory. It's his delight and pleasure to work within us. So do you know what? We're the answer today. We have. Christ in us, the hope of glory. We have a new identity. And what's our role in this? We just have to agree with what he says about us and then tell other people about what he's done in our lives. Tell other people about the hope that we have and the future that we have because Jesus believes in us. Jesus is confident in us. Even despite our failings and our mess ups and everything that we get wrong, Jesus doesn't give up on us. Isn't that incredible? So I want you to be encouraged by that today. So let's celebrate. Let's remind ourselves that we can only celebrate this because Jesus took the ultimate sacrifice for us. Because he died, he gave up his life so that we today could share in his life. So we just thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Thank you that your body was broken on the cross today so that we could live our lives of wholeness, of freedom, and just the life that you always planned for us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus, I thank you that your blood was poured out for us that we're forgiven today, that we can stand today saying that we are a new creation, that the old has gone, that we can embrace the new because of you, Jesus. So 
I pray today that you'd be blessed. I pray today you'd have confidence in who God says you are. I pray today that you would put on that new identity that he's given you, that you would truly let go of the old, let go of the old habits of thinking about yourself and you would embrace the new and you would speak the words of hope and life to those people around you. Amen, have a great day.